In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the pH of strong acid solutions and strong base solutions. So before we look at how to do these calculations, the first thing I want to mention is not every MCAT question about pH is just a direct pH calculation questions. There are questions like how does the hydrogen ion concentration compare between a pH 2 solution and pH 5 solution? And there, the question is more so asking you if you understand the pH scale. So the first thing you want to know is that the pH scale is logarithmic. So that means if the pH decreases by a value of 1, the hydrogen ion concentration increased by a factor of 10. If the pH value decreases by 2, that means the hydrogen ion concentration increases by 100. So again, pH is a logarithmic scale. So with that said, let's take a look at how we calculate the pH of strong acids and strong bases. We're starting with these because calculations of pH for strong acids and strong bases are easier than that for weak acids and weak bases. Those are a bit more complex and we'll see how to do them in the next video. So the nice thing about strong acids is they dissociate completely in solution. So whatever concentration of strong acid you have, you can assume that's the same as the concentration of hydronium ions in solution. So to see how this works, we've got an example question where I want to know what is the pH of a 3 times 10 to the negative 6 molar solution of HI. So the first thing we want to take note is, as we said, strong acids are assumed to dissociate completely. So the concentration of HI, they've told us, is equal to 3 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. As a strong acid, we can assume this is also the concentration of hydronium ions. If we have the concentration of hydronium ions, then we can plug that into the pH equation. Negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, H3O plus. So that will give us negative log of 3 times 10 to the negative 6. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated because if it was just 10 to the negative 6, then you would say, oh, the pH is 6. If it were just negative log of 10 to the negative 2, you would just say, oh, the pH is just 2. But here, we have this number in the front, this 3 times 10 to the negative 6. How do we deal with this? So the first thing you should know is that you do not get a calculator on the MCAT. So you are expected to be able to do these types of calculations. However, the MCAT also knows that you don't have a calculator. So for any of these calculations, you can round and still get the correct answer. So here's how you can approach these types of log calculations. 3 times 10 to the negative 6. Well, I'm sure you can agree that the number 1, uh, or sorry, the number 3 is between the numbers 1 and 10. All right, that's all we're starting with. 3 is between 1 and 10. So that also means that 3 times 10 to the negative 6 must be between 1 times 10 to the negative 6 and 10 times 10 to the negative 6. 10 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, so a very fair statement. 3 times 10 to the negative 6 is between 1 times 10 to the negative 6 and 10 times 10 to the negative 6. Now, this is actually not in scientific notation. So we can turn this into scientific notation, which would be 10 to the negative 5. Now, what's helpful about this is doing a pH calculation of this number is tough, but 10 to the negative 6 and 10 to the negative 5 are easy. We know negative log of 10 to the negative 6 is just 6, and negative log of 10 to the negative 5 is just 5, so this tells us that the pH of our solution must be between 5 and 6. And this is all you need to be able to do for the MCAT, which means the MCAT is not going to give you answer choices of 5.1, 5.3, 5.4, 5.7, right? They're going to give you numbers that are different enough that if you do this rounding approach that we did here to give you an approximate answer, that will be sufficient to get the answer for the question. All right, 
So here's one example of how to do pH calculations. Let's take a look at another example. Here we'll look at strong bases. It's slightly different from strong acids, but fairly similar. Again, strong bases dissociate completely in solution, so we can safely assume that the concentration of the strong base is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. So with the hydroxide ion concentration, you can't calculate the pH directly, but you can calculate the pOH. But the pOH you can convert pretty easily into pH using the equation pH plus pOH equals 14. So to see how this works, let's take a look at an example. So here we're going to look at this question, which is what is the pH of a 6 times 10 to the negative 2 molar lithium hydroxide solution? So again, our assumption is our strong base, lithium hydroxide, dissociates completely in solution. So its concentration of 6 times 10 to the negative 2 molar is the same as the hydroxide ion concentration. So using this concentration, we can calculate the pOH. The pOH is negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration which is negative log of 6 times 10 to the negative 2. Again, this is difficult to calculate, but we can make a simple approximation. Again, we're going to say 6 times 10 to the negative 2 is between 1 times 10 to the negative 2 and 10 times 10 to the negative 2. 10 times 10 to the negative 2, we can turn back into scientific notation it's equal to 10 times 10 to the negative 1. So this tells us that our pOH is between 1 and 2, which now we can turn this into pH. If the pOH is 1, then our pH is 13. If the pOH is 2, then our pH is 12. So this tells us that for this question, the pH is between 12 to 13. All right, and one last thing I want to mention is that in these cases, we are dealing with monoprotic acids and bases, which means each molecule only donates one proton or accepts one proton at a time. Generally, the MCAT's not going to ask you to do pH calculations with polyprotic acids and bases because then the calculations get more complicated or if they did in some of those cases, you would only have to focus on the dissociation of the first proton.